Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. General Secretary of the People's National Party, Julian Robinson, has welcomed news that the government will establish a joint select committee to review the proposed legislation for a national identification system. At a press briefing this morning, Justice Minister Delroy Chuck said a redrafted bill will be presented to a joint select committee of parliament. Mr. Robinson is pleased that the government will not appeal the Supreme Court's April 12 ruling that the NITS Act was unconstitutional as well as null and void. We welcome the opportunity to participate in the Joint Select Committee and to have a NITS bill which is consistent and upholds the principles of our Constitution and the rights of the Jamaican people. And the party is ready and willing as we have always been to play our role in advancing it once it does not infringe on the rights of the Jamaican people. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck wants to broaden the number of offenses for which people can have their records expunged. In his contribution to the sectoral debate on Tuesday, Mr. Chuck proposed changes to the law so that the criminal records of more deserving people can be erased. Once it can be shown that for extended, prolonged period of time, they have put crime behind them. Mr. Speaker, there's a pastor who I know who was convicted for, sorry, was charged for murder, but was convicted for manslaughter. He has applied to have his record expunged, but the act does not allow it. He's a pastor. He has been preaching for the last 25 years. And he would like his record to be expunged. But the act does not allow it to be expunged. And that is the sort of person we would want expunged. He said the expungement will extend to certain cases of carnal abuse. We have a gentleman from St. Thomas who, when he was 21 or 22, had sex with a 15-year-old girl. And he went to court admitted, pleaded guilty, got three years probation, and at the end of the probation period, he married the girl. They have two adults now in their 20s. He would like his record expunged, but because it's carnal abuse, it can be expunged. The opposition spokesman on health is calling for restrictions on doctors with private practices who also work in the public sector. In his contribution to the sectoral debate in Parliament on Tuesday, Dr. Dayton Campbell highlighted a lack of accountability among medical staff. What you have is that you have doctors who arrive late to work and they leave early so you don't get the necessary surgical work done. There's a lack of accountability and you have private cases being done on the government staff. He wants doctors to be available for more hours of work so that the number of daily surgeries can be increased. Doctors who are employed with the government should only be allowed to do their private cases after 4 p.m. or on weekends. Not even in the night, because I'm saying we should put two teams for the night. The on-call team and one call dealing with the backlog. The director of the road safety unit is giving parents suggestions following Monday's crash in Black Hill, Portland, which claimed the life of one student and injured 23 others. Speaking with our news team on Tuesday, Kenwood Hare called for more scrutiny on the behavior of drivers. One of the ways we're going to have to prevent it is that we have to educate our children. And educate our children in a very serious manner. How to identify persons who are intent of giving them untimely death. And we not only educate, but our children must hear. Who cannot hear, feel all the time. Who can't hear, feel all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time they feel. A 27-year-old taxi operator was the victim of Tuesday's fatal crash along the North-South Highway. Taffy White is from Florentina Drive in Angels Face 2, St. Catherine.
TVJ News understands that sometime around 1 o'clock, Mr. White was driving a car which crashed into a trailer that stopped in the left lane. He was pronounced dead at hospital. Two guns and 13 rounds of ammunition have been recovered by the Kingston and St. Andrew police in separate incidents over the past two days. On Tuesday about 8 p.m., the Hunsday police were reportedly on patrol in West Kingston when they were confronted by an armed man who opened fire at them. The attacker ran, left behind a Glock pistol with four rounds of ammunition. No one was injured. In the second incident, one man was arrested and charged with illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition. He has been identified as 42-year-old Everton Crary of 4th Street in the parish. The police reported they went on an operation in the area when Mr. Crary was stopped and searched. An Arcus 9mm pistol fitted with a magazine containing 13 rounds of ammunition was taken from him. There's a call for a change in the approach taken by students who sit the Carbon Secondary Education Certificate CSEC math exam. National Mathematics Coordinator in the Education Ministry, Dr. Tamika Benjamin, is pushing for a change in the mindset of both teachers and students. Her advice follows feedback from another math expert who was responding to complaints that students who sat the exam last week were unfairly tested on areas outside of the prescribed syllabus. The matter is being investigated by the Education Ministry. However, Dr. Benjamin, who has reviewed the paper, is of the view that it did not go outside the scope of the syllabus. She is recommending that math problems be approached in a particular way and the use of past papers to be discontinued at a certain point. We have to move beyond teaching students about steps. If we are only going to teach them about steps and I get into a situation where I am nervous and I'm anxious, then and I forget one thing in that process, I am not able to think critically because all you have done is said, do this, then do this, then do this, and do this. And if I'm focused on that, that's going to throw me off. We have to teach them to think. We have to make sure that they understand what they're doing. And we teach them to think by asking them questions that encourage them to reason, to justify their answers. So we actually have to move beyond the past paper question. Past paper questions should not be used in grade 10 and in the beginning of 11. And it's time for a break. We have more stories in our midday news package right after these messages. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. A human rights advocate is calling for more information on what caused last year's fire at the Walker's Place of Safety in St. Andrew, which claimed the lives of two children. 30 children were also displaced. Human rights advocate Susan Goff filed an access to information request. She contends that the issues at the Walker's Place of Safety should have been treated similarly to what happened after the fire at the Armadale Juvenile Correctional Center in St. Anne. Seven girls died in that incident. came to my mind was that through the commission of inquiry into Armadale, there was a thorough investigation and a very strong report was, um, was released. What I was looking for was a similar level of um, investigation into the deaths of the two children at um, the Walker's Place of Safety. Why was it that the fire happened? But also why was it that some children, the majority of children, um, were rescued, but that two died. And were there, were those deaths preventable? Was there anything that needed to have been done better? Were there any lessons to be learned for improvements in other homes? According to the Jamaica Fire Brigade report, an electrical short circuit was the cause of the fire at the Walker's Place of Safety. The access to information request also showed a pattern in the payment of the electricity bill. The record for 2017 and up to the time of the fire showed that there was always an outstanding balance. Although payments were being made periodically, there was always an outstanding balance of from approximately $11,000 to as high as $200,000 or plus. 
The limited information about the, to, about the fire to the public was also a concern. And time now for a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the health report, we look at yeast infection. For those patients, you have to explore other things like hygiene and diet, the type of underwear they're wearing, because if it's underwear that's trapping moisture and heat, then it's the, you're more prone to getting a yeast infection. Some women also go to the gym and they stay in the gym clothes for an extended period or swimwear for an extended period. That's the health report this evening in Primetime News. And now for today's healthy living tip. Yeast infections may be treated at home with antifungal creams available from pharmacies and drug stores. Do not take home remedies to cure your infection. And if the symptoms persist, go back and speak to your healthcare provider. In news overseas, backbenchers in Theresa May's Conservative Party will decide today on whether to allow another vote of no confidence in her leadership in a move that could set up the final days of the embattled Prime Minister's tenure. We go to the CNN for more. Theresa May for some time now has been synonymous with her Brexit deal and her ability to get it through Parliament. It seems that both of those things are in their final hours at the moment. Her party is at the end of its tether. There are still a few loyalists who are saying that people should try and calm down and give the Prime Minister a bit more time. But by and large, the open criticism of the Prime Minister today from sources within Cabinet, from plenty of her own lawmakers, has reached new heights which is saying something for this Prime Minister. It all comes down to the fact that yesterday, Theresa May made a speech where she outlined her last chance to get a Brexit deal through, and it managed to annoy all parts of Parliament. So she's had this problem before, that in an effort to compromise, she's isolated herself and lost votes on both sides. Well, yesterday seemed to be the worst case of that yet. So in trying to appeal to some Brexiteers, she's lost some more Remainers. In trying to reach out and be conciliatory with the Labour Party, she's lost members of her own party, and she now seems like she's got less support than she's had at any point over these last few months. And in sports, the Reggae Girls squad for their first ever FIFA Women's World Cup was named this morning. I'm now joined by TVJ Simon Preston with a list of the names. Simon. Thank you very much, Andrew. Now, 16 members from the World Cup qualifiers in last year, 2018, have been involved and will be heading to France next month. The team, which will be led by Kanye Plummer, however, includes only seven Jamaican-born players. Now, the full squad reads Alison Swaby, Ashley Shim, Chinyelu Asher, Chanel Hudson Marks, Denisha Blackwood, Dominique Bond Flaza, Khadija Shaw, Lauren Silva, Marla Sweatman, Nicole McClure, Sashana Campbell, Kanya Plummer, Toriana Patterson, Trudy Carter, Yasmin Jameson, Chantel Swaby, Kayla McCoy, Chenya Matthews, Tiffany Cameron, Jody Brown, Sydney Schneider, and finally the 18 year old Shadi Adam Alekun. So, this is the squad that has been named for the World Cup for. France in for the Jamaican squad. Next, they'll be in action on Friday against FC Surge, a Florida-based team. And prior to and after that, they'll be taking on Scotland in a friendly international at Hampden Park. And from there, it'll be straight to France for the World Cup on matches on June 9, 14, and 18 against the likes of Brazil, Italy, and Argentina. And of course, live coverage of this event can be seen on TVJ, TVJSN, and OneSpotMedia.com with extensive radio coverage on Hits 92 FM. Um, Simon, very quickly, I think you mentioned about 22 names there, but it's a 23-member squad. What's up with the last position, the Preci last spot? Precisely. So the coach Hugh Menzies mentioned that there is still one more player that he's trying to get involved into the squad. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get FIFA clearance regarding a Jamaican passport for a player. He didn't specifically name that player, but it could be an individual that is waiting clearance, or it could be Shakira Duncan, who has 24 international goals for Jamaica, who scored against Panama quite recently at the National Stadium. She could be in the mix, and also the veteran Christina at Chang at 33 years of age she could be another one involved in the mix but what we do know for sure is that those are names are the 22 of the 23 heading to France thank you very much Simon thank you and that's the midday news I'm Andrea Chisholm join us at 7 for the primetime news package on behalf of the news sports and production teams good afternoon <laughs>